Hello and welcome to HW News. This is me Aarti. Let us have a quick look at the headlines today. German Chancellor Angela Merkel, who is in India for two-day visit, received a ceremonial reception at the Rashtrapati Bhavan today and said that the two countries were linked by close ties. Merkel, who was received by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, is scheduled to meet him for a short span of 15 minutes after which the intergovernmental consultations between the two sides will begin. They are expected to sign around 20 agreements. The two sides will also look at enhancing people-to-people -people contact and cooperate in the field of agriculture. Around 1 p.m., both the sides will likely sign a slew of agreements and issue joint press statements at Hyderabad House. Let us hear what Angela Merkel said. Heute hier in Neu-Delhi bin, zu den fünften Regierungskonsultationen und vom Premierminister so freundlich empfangen werde. Es ist ähm, mein vierter Besuch in Indien und ich bin sehr gespannt auf das Programm. In Deutschland und Indien verbindet vieles. Wir werden über alle Aspekte unserer Regierungszusammenarbeit sprechen. Wir werden Memoranden unterzeichnen. Und dabei wird sich herausstellen, dass es eine sehr tiefe und breite Zusammenarbeit zwischen Indien und Deutschland gibt. Und natürlich sind wir voller Hochachtung vor dem großen, vielfältigen Land Indien, das ich leider nur in einem ganz kleinen Stück besuchen kann. Let me say, sorry, let me say that I'm delighted uh, to be here in India for these the fifth intergovernmental consultations uh, to be together with the Prime Minister as an honored guest and uh, I would like to thank the Prime Minister for the very warm and gracious welcome uh, with which we have been received here and uh, this is my fourth visit here to India and looking very much forward uh, to this interesting uh, program. Uh, Germany and India um, are linked by very close ties indeed. Uh, we have a number of discussions here um, of, on uh, issues of common interest. Uh, we shall have the opportunity also to sign a number of memoranda of understanding um, and other agreements and I think that that shows very clearly that we have indeed a very broad, uh, very broad based and deep relationship. Uh, we have been cooperating for many years and we will build on this cooperation um, in the future. There's a very close relationship, as I said, between India and the Federal Republic of Germany and we have uh, great respect and admiration for uh, this very vast country and its great diversity, its great variety um, and uh, so that is uh, something that uh, we wish uh, to build on this relationship. Unfortunately this time I will have only um, time for a very, very short visit and I will see only a very small part of this wonderful country. Thank you. Let's move on to the next news. Amid a bitter tussle of power sharing with the BJP in Maharashtra, Shiv Sena Chief Uddhav Thakre will embark on a draw tour on November 3 and visit Aurangabad. The move comes a day after the party asked Maharashtra Governor Bhagat Singh Koshyari to declare a wet drought in the state owing to unseasonal rain in various parts. Heavy post-monsoon showers in various areas in Maharashtra have prompted this demand. That's what Shiv Sena leader Aditya Thakre had told reporters after meeting Koshyari at Raj Bhavan on Thursday. Let us hear what Aditya Thakre said. विधायक आए हैं महाराष्ट्र में हमारे जो त्रिशस विधायक हैं उन्होंने यही एक विनती की है कि जो महाराष्ट्र में बारिश हुई अभी नवंबर में जो स्टॉम आके गया जो भी नुकसान हुआ है मछीमार बांधों का हो किसान बांधों का हो उनको नुकसान भरपाई मिलनी चाहिए जो भी नुकसान हुआ हो उसके लिए उनको मदद मिलनी चाहिए और राज्यपाल महोदय ने हमें यह आश्वासित किया है कि खुद सेंटर से बात करेंगे और जो भी यंत्रणा लोकली लगती है जो भी कलेक्टर की यंत्रणा हो जो भी हो वो सारी एक्टिवेट करके लोगों की मदद करेंगे सरकार बनाने का समय भी लगा सरकार बनाने का समय भी लगा सरकार आप लोग सरकार बनाकर इस मुद्दे को हल ज्यादा बेहतर तरीके बिल्कुल लेकिन टेक्निकल बात यह है कि अभी केयर टेकिंग गवर्नमेंट है अभी जो होते हैं अधिकार राज्यपाल महोदय के होते हैं और सारे जो कलेक्टर्स होते हैं हमें हम सभी से दरखास्त करेंगे की रास्ते पे आओ मदद करो हम खुद भी शिवसेना करके मदद कर रहे हैं और अन्य सारी पार्टियां भी आप देख रहे हो की मदद कर रही है पे मैं कुछ नहीं बोलूंगा जो भी कहना है उद्धव साहब कहेंगे वो आखिरी शब्द उनका रहेगा पक्ष, पक्ष प्रमुख का रहेगा हम सिर्फ अभी जो महाराष्ट्र की जनता है उनकी आवाज लेके राजभवन आए हैं मुझे लगता है आज के लिए सिर्फ यही कह, यही कहूंगा कि हम जनता से बांध ले हम जनता के लिए काम करते रहेंगे सरकार में हो जैसे भी हो अभी किसान और सारी जो जनता है जिसे कुछ भी नुकसान हुआ हो ये बारिश की वजह से हो स्टॉम की वजह से हो हम जाके उनकी मदद करने वाले हैं जैसे पिछले पांच सालों में हम करते आए उनकी आवाज उठाते आए वैसे आवाज उठाते रहेंगे और आपके द्वारा भी यही कहेंगे कि जो भी 
सिस्टम है वो एक्टिवेट हो शिवसेना लीडर संजय राउत मीन वाइल ऑन थर्सडे रीच आउट टू एनसीपी चीफ शरद पवार एंड विजिटेड द लैटर्स रेसिडेंस इन मुंबई इवन एज अनसर्टेंटी ओवर द गवर्नमेंट फॉर्मेशन इन महाराष्ट्र कंटिन्यूज टू लिंगर ऑन राउत हैड सेड दैट ही विश्ड पवार ऑन द ओकेजन ऑफ दिवाली एंड ऑल्सो डिस्कस द पॉलिटिक्स इन महाराष्ट्र ही सेड दैट द मीटिंग कम्स एट अ टाइम वेन द बीजेपी हैज क्लैरिफाइड दैट इट वोट गिव अप द पोस्ट ऑफ चीफ मिनिस्टर However, it has offered 1326 formula to the Shiv Sena. However, it doesn't seem to go down well with the party. Amidst a tussle for the power, speculations have been rife over the back-channel talks between Congress, NCP, and Shiv Sena. Let us hear what Sanjay Raut said today morning. I will say that if Shiv Sena wants, if Shiv Sena has taken it, then Maharashtra's hit for the stable government, Shiv Sena can be able to get the power of Shiv Sena. कहा से बहुमत जुटेगा सर क्या कर... देखिए फिर बीजेपी कहां से जुटाए सर जिस तरह का मैंडेट महाराष्ट्र की जनता ने दिया है आपको क्या लगता है महाराष्ट्र की जनता क्या चाहती है महाराष्ट्र की जनता चाहती है कि शिवसेना का मुख्यमंत्री बने जो 50 50 का फॉर्मूला जनता के सामने तय हुआ था पूरे मीडिया ने पूरे देश को राज्य को दिखाया था उस फॉर्मूले की तहत काम हो और शिवसेना और बीजेपी में एक साथ बैठकर सरकार चलाए ये राज्य की जनता चाहती थी ये मैंडेट है अगर ये मैंडेट कोई मानने से इनकार कर देता है और ऐसी कोई बात हुई नहीं इस प्रकार की बातें अगर सामने आती है तो हमारे पास उद्धव ठाकरे जी के पास कोई विकल्प नहीं बचता Moving on, a farmer from B district in Maharashtra wants to be a chief minister till the ruling BJP and the Shiv Sena resolve their differences over power sharing and formation of the next government. The farmer Shrikant Vishnu Gadale, a resident of Vadmauli in Kej Taluka, has expressed this wish in a letter submitted to the office of B collector on Thursday. He wrote in the letter that Shiv Sena and BJP are yet to resolve their issue regarding the post of chief minister which was raised after the 2019 assembly election result. Natural calamities that is unseasonal rains have hampered ready to harvest crops in the state and the farmers are tense over these calamities. At a time when farmers are suffering, the Shiv Sena and the BJP are unable to resolve the issue of holding chief minister's post. Hence, till the issue is resolved, the government should hand over the responsibility of the chief minister's post to me. That's what Gadale wrote in his letter. He also said that I will solve the problems of farmers and give them justice. This definitely should come as an eye-opener for the two parties. Let's move on to the next news. Facebook-owned platform WhatsApp came out with a shocking revelation that said that journalists and human rights activists in India have been a victim of surveillance by anonymous operators using Israeli spyware Pegasus. The issue unfolded following a lawsuit filed on Thursday, Tuesday by WhatsApp in a US federal court in San Francisco where they alleged that the Israeli NSO group targeted some, some of the 1,400 WhatsApp users with Pegasus. It came into light as soon as the Indian Express reported it. It is learned that at least two dozen academics, lawyers, Belit activists and journalists in India were contacted and alerted by WhatsApp that their phones had been under latest surveillance for a two-week period until May 2019. Now, after the news came out, IT ministry sought a response from WhatsApp by November 4. Meanwhile, Congress has launched a strong attack on the government. Let us hear what Randeep Surjewala said. And I was snooping, spying and compromising the cell phones of journalists Dalit, civil society and human rights activists, lawyers, academicians and others through a surveillance software called Pegasus of the Israeli agency NSO. We suspect and please take it seriously that many senior leaders of opposition and judges of the Supreme Court and High Courts have also been the target by BJP government of this spy software Pegasus. The spyware Pegasus not only breaches WhatsApp, 
but is able to turn on the phone's camera as also its microphone to record everything in the surrounding. It captures all activities in the vicinity of the phone. Besides hacking all the security features of the phone including text messages and voice calls. It also hacks into the passwords, the contact lists and everything else including a calendar that is stored in the phone. All this is done without the permission of and without the knowledge of owner of the telephone. Facebook, owner of WhatsApp has now admitted that nearly 1400 people, majority of whom are Indians, have been affected by the phone hack of the Pegasus spyware. The number may actually be much larger as admitted by Facebook itself as they have been able to pinpoint the exact number of telephones and people whose phones have been hacked. Meanwhile, NSO, the maker of the spyware Pegasus has come forward and said, we only sell this spyware to government agencies and to no one else. BJP government has maintained a conspiratorial silence on the entire issue with the information and IT secretary refusing to respond to the requests made by journalists in this behalf and regard. Well, India on Thursday hit back at China over its objection to the bifurcation of Jammu and Kashmir into two union territories, saying the reorganization is entirely India's internal affair and it does not expect other countries to comment on such matters. India also said that China continues to be in occupation of a large tract of area in the union territories of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh. Let's move on to the next news. Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan on Friday announced that no fees would be charged from Sikh pilgrims on the inauguration day of the Kartarpur Corridor as well as the 558th birthday of Guru Nanak Dev. He also waived off two conditions for the visit saying the pilgrims would not need a passport for the visit and instead a valid ID would be permissible. Also, they no longer have to register 10 days in advance for the pilgrimage. India and Pakistan last week signed the agreement on the Kartarpur corridor that will allow Indian pilgrims to undertake a visa-free visit to Gurudwara Darbar Sahib, the shrine of the Sikh religion's founder Guru Nanak Dev in Pakistan. Let's move on to the next news. The Islamic State group declared a new leader on Thursday after it confirmed the death of its leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi days earlier in a US raid in Syria. In its audio release by the IS central media arm Al-Farqan Foundation, a new spokesman for IS identifies the successor as Abu Ibrahim al-Hashimi al-Qureshi, tracing his lineage like al-Baghdadi to the Prophet Muhammad's Quraysh tribe. It provides no other details about al-Qureshi and it was not immediately clear who the name was in reference to. The group typically identifies its leaders using norms that refers to their tribal affiliations and lineage. Those names often change. Police seized an unclaimed bag containing RDX at the premises of Indira Gandhi International Airport in Delhi on Friday. Officials said the bag was initially kept under observation but later the security personnel seized the bag only to find explosive material in it. Now, RDX is an organic compound that's used as an explosive. Police have beefed up the security now at the Indira Gandhi International Airport and Terminal 3 has been seized. That's all for the headlines today. For more news and updates, you can log on to www.hwnews.in. Now, you can also download our HW News app on your Android Play Store and Apple Store. And do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter.